In this video, we're going to look at absorption and emission line spectra. So we'll start with a quick review of the Bohr model of the atom. The protons and neutrons are located in the nucleus of the atom, and the electrons are located in energy levels or shells around the nucleus. Electrons can only exist at certain energy levels with discrete amounts of energy. So an electron can occupy energy level 1 or energy level 2, but not in between energy level 1 and 2. The next point is that electrons can transition between energy levels. So that means an electron can transition from n equals 1 to n equals 2, or from n equals 3 down to n equals 1. If an electron absorbs a discrete amount of energy, it can transition to a higher energy level, which is called its excited state. So for example, an electron can absorb a discrete or exact amount of energy and it will transition from an n equals 1 to an n equals 2 energy level. If an electron emits a discrete amount of energy, it can transition to a lower energy level. So for example, an electron in the n equals 2 energy level can emit or give off energy and transition to an n equals 1 energy level. So next we look at how these electron transitions between energy levels give rise to absorption and emission line spectra. So here we have again the Bohr model of the atom and here we have an electron in the n equals 2 energy level. And these arrows show the electron transitioning to the n equals 3 energy level, the n equals 4 energy level, the n equals 5 energy level and the n equals 6 energy level. And here we have an absorption spectrum. You may remember this from the previous video. An absorption spectrum has black lines on a colored background. Below our absorption spectrum, we have the energy levels of the atom from n equals 1 to n equals 6. And as you can see, the colored arrows on the diagram, they correspond to the colors that are missing from the absorption spectrum. As we mentioned earlier, electrons can transition between energy levels if they absorb discrete amounts of energy. So if we start with this red arrow here, the electron has transitioned from the n equals 2 to the n equals 3 energy level. And the energy that the electron has absorbed corresponds to the wavelength of red light. Next we'll have a look at this blue arrow here. The electron has transitioned from the n equals 2 to the n equals 5 energy level. And the energy that the electron has absorbed corresponds to the wavelength of blue light. So to summarize, the reason for these black lines on an absorption spectrum is that the electron transitions between n equals 2 to 3 or 2 to 4 or 2 to 5 or 2 to 6, the electrons have absorbed the energy and the energy that's absorbed corresponds to the wavelength of visible light. So in the previous example, we saw how electrons can transition to higher energy levels when they absorb energy and the energy that they absorb is related to the wavelength of visible light. One thing you'll notice about this diagram is that the arrows are going in the opposite direction. So these electrons are transitioning from higher energy levels to lower energy levels. And again, each electron transition has its own color. So here we have our emission spectrum, which has colored lines on a black background. So here we have the energy levels within our atom from n equals 1 to n equals 6. So we'll start with this red arrow here. This red arrow represents an electron transition from the n equals 3 to the n equals 2 energy level. When an electron transitions from a higher to a lower energy level, it emits a discrete amount of energy. And the energy that is emitted by the electron corresponds to the wavelength of red light. Next, we'll have a look at this blue arrow here. This blue arrow represents an electron transition from the n equals 5 to the n equals 2 energy level. And when the electron transitions to a lower energy level, it emits energy. And the energy that's emitted by the electron corresponds to the wavelength of blue light. So to summarize, the reason for these colored lines on the black background of an emission spectrum, they correspond to the energy emitted when an electron transitions from a higher energy level to a lower energy level, and in this case, the energy level is n equals 2. Next, we look at the hydrogen emission spectrum. 
So here we can see the different types of electromagnetic radiation emitted as electrons transition from higher to lower energy levels. We have UV radiation, visible light and infrared radiation. So we'll start by looking at electron transitions to n equals 1 which is the ground state and they correspond to UV radiation. So UV radiation is the highest energy, it has a high frequency and a short wavelength. Next are electron transitions to n equals 2 and they correspond to visible light. So in visible light violet is highest energy, red is lowest energy. In addition violet light has the highest frequency and the shortest wavelength, red light has the lowest frequency and the longest wavelength. And finally we have electron transitions to n equals 3 and that corresponds to infrared radiation. So infrared radiation is the lowest energy of all three emissions, it's the lowest frequency and has the longest wavelength.